be an overview of where the S&P closed today and where we might see it going uh, tomorrow. We have one more day this week and today was the first day of September. I'm just going to quickly change to the monthly because I would I'm, I'm curious to see how uh, how the month was. I was keeping an eye on the smaller time frames today, especially for Bitcoin and Ethereum, because I was in two longs um, in XRP and Bitcoin. But Ethereum was sort of like leading the market in terms of its moderation. It has great moderate moves. Okay, so uh, last month closed on an up candle. It back tested the 20 on the monthly. And we have a nice stochastic uh, up, upturn on the S&P. It did close between these two levels. So while the whole month, uh, while while the whole month moved um, towards the peak formation, the peak formation support and resistance, the pink line, it closed on um, the next level down. Now the next level down is the midline of the whole level. So just for you for you to see what I mean. So this one would be level one here. So on the pink line, we would have level one. Then on the next, the next level would be this level. And I am gonna make it pink so that we Yes, we have it clear. So this is level one, clone. This would be level two. And again, I am very proportional when it comes to this. So um, level three might be here or level three might be here. So if I were more technical than proportional, I would pick level three here. Just because of uh, it has so many touches, but that would be a monthly, a monthly um, level of support and resistance. It would be super, super strong, this level here. Now, if I were more proportional, and by proportional, I mean having a look at the size of the levels, I would say that the next level is here. We would have we would have a fair bit. My my uh, definition for a support and resistance is two touches, three strikes, strike throughs, three pierce throughs, and we have we have we have the two touches. We have four pierce throughs here. To me, this qualifies as a nice support and resistance level. But that and I, and I will take it into account as such for the time being, unless I am you know proven otherwise in in movement if this level breaks you know on in the coming months um and there's you know it's it's there's no retrace to it or nothing like that uh you know n nothing along these lines um then i would take the next level down as uh, level three so um this being the background uh, of SMP, I would think for, um, again, I, I keep saying this every time we have a session because I, I want us to have that in mind when we're trading. Um, again, to me, uh, there is another step down to, to be made. Uh, but when we're talking about, when we're talking about the next steps, you can see how long it takes to consolidate for the next level down. So those next steps down, as in the next level down for the S&P and for Bitcoin and Ethereum might take a while. For instance, here, it took one, two, three, four months um, of pushing down on this level and then the fifth one broke. And I'm only talking about the four months from the from the higher from from the higher high from from the, from the peak. Here we've had we've had only two months pushing down on this level. So I would again just by looking at this pattern, I would say we 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 have at least one more month putting pressure on this 
for it to break. And that month, uh, for instance, this month can be a lifting month, though, again, September historically for crypto is not so good. But if we have, um, you know, it's nine times out of 10, but if we do have a good September, I would see um, a bit of relief here, a bit of a breather, and then a push down. But we are very, uh, again, I know a month sounds like a lot, but it, it is really a little considering the, the bigger context. So we're, we're, I would say we're one, max two monthly candles away from the next level down. Um, now, this is the general context. This is what I'm watching. Um, this is these these levels uh, is what I'm watching daily when the futures market opens uh, at uh, my time, four thirty UK time, two thirty, and I'm watching to see what happens with the S and P, how it holds the levels, how it loses the levels, and how it gains them back. These again that's how I, I i use this as a sort of like guiding indicator um, for what bitcoin will do and what bitcoin will do is again going to be amplified by ethereum because it has great fundamentals behind it at the moment um and then um, xrp xrp is doing its own thing in terms of percentages xrp is doing a much uh, nicer recovery now um whereas bitcoin has been absolutely miserable in terms of percentages. Now, having said that, let's have a look at the daily levels for Ethereum. Uh, so again, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use pink lines. That's that's my inspiration. Uh, Roy always tells me in, in my yoga to stay open to inspiration. So that that was the bit of inspiration that came to me tonight. Uh, making the level lines pink so that we can tell them apart from the other support and resistance. Where is this? Uh, so here we've had the peak formation level one, then we drop to level two and I believe for Ethereum there will be another drop down. Again, if, if we're going, if crypto goes hand in hand with uh, the S&P, we might see another retest of this level and then uh, coming back down for this one. And uh, we can see here that we're starting to form a wedge here. Again, this is the daily channel. So if I'm taking this towards the end, towards the apex, it's the 12th of, of October when the wedge really narrows in unless it is broken either way. So this is the space that I'm looking in, uh, in terms of trading, trading space for the next, for the next month. So this would be it between the pink line, which is the level two and the green line, which would be like a divergence from the first, um, from the first V. Now, um, I have also made a slight adjustment to the pattern that Ethereum is in just for um, just to keep an eye out. Um, so this we had an ascending wedge that broke down and met its target. I think it was um, I think my target was 1404 and came down to 1412. So I, I take it as as met, especially when we're talking of a drop of this proportion. And now I, I put on the four hour, I put this line here again, just to keep an eye on it as a trend. So you know how I, I like to have my, uh, my, my uh, four hour patterns as a guiding, a guiding pattern and a guiding um, um, trend, trend, trend line formation. Um, here we have an ascending wedge and here we have a descending wedge. We'll see. And again, these two map out the, the space that we're going to be moving in. And it, it, is, it is the same as the space that the arc will be moving in. If I put the line here and I drag this one here, there it is. Um, we're going to probably, if this was mountain peak, so we had double top here, mountain peak here, we're going to have a final peak, final bounce, final retrace, somewhere in the space. And generally towards the end of the pattern, we will have to uh, expand a little bit the range. Now, the day is coming up on the stochastic. Um, do we have, we don't have, we don't have a bullish divergence on the day, but I believe we have a bullish divergence on the four hour.
yeah but it's not it's not between these two bottom these these bottoms here it's between this bottom here and this bottom here this bullish divergence hasn't yet reset here and the four hour stochastic is crossing up and we are faced with this lovely trend line here which threatens to break up so we'll see tomorrow if we're getting to break up or if we're just going to be in this space of let me measure the range just for fun again ethereum has a nice trading range of eight percent up and down here in the space looking good either way um i believe there's still another swing down and then up that's if if i count the swings here but again this this might be if i count one two one to, yeah another swing down another swing up another swing down so this might actually uh, it doesn't look to me like the line here could handle another drop but we we've yet we've yet to see uh, it's it's looking very um it's looking um how can i say on tuesday i was looking at it and it was looking great to lift up uh, and not look back and then it started dropping and breaking through pivot points and uh, levels and i believe because the levels are so tight together on the day because of the the tight range the moves the moves are breaking them a lot easier so it's what roy and i call untrustworthy sideways so it's where you can get very easily head wrecked as a trader so not necessarily financially if you manage your positions but head wrecked absolutely it can turn you uh, up up and down um, every day and this is basically coming into our uh, weekly trade setup uh, this is basically what ethereum has done so while it did move uh, within the ranges that we set on monday we've had only one trade here that came to fruition uh, where is my and this one was really nice okay and then we would have had the chance of um, maybe longing from here and then taking uh, some profit here at the double top and then coming back down to here but I'm gonna put this as um, I'm gonna put this as a, uh, a maybe because you really have to watch it this was not the trade this was not the level trade that you would trade if that makes sense like this would be a good trade to make on the day uh, and um, I remember on I made I have to bring my notebook I think I made about four trades this week I took profit four times uh, but the, the, the thing was I had to watch out for these formations um, and then I got caught in a long when it held I'll show you on Bitcoin uh, when when it held the support and resistance line and I'm still I'm still in it and, and I don't want to let it go because to me it's 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 gonna go um, where where I believe it's gonna go uh, I don't have my invalidations uh, confirmed so uh, until I have my validations confirmed, I'm not going to exit my um, my short. So here, it, it's been really a terrible week to, to trade in terms of uh, the sideways horrible uh, signals. Um, you would have you would have had to trade the five minute. To be honest, um, it takes a lot of experience to trade the five minute because you have to be incredibly disciplined and come in and then come out and in and out for each of those swings. And um, it takes a lot of mental effort and intensity to hold that. And in my opinion, uh, most of the times do, doing the 10X, because I've traded the five minute, it's, it's not that bad, um, but uh, coming in and out within those ranges and, um, Fair enough, Ethereum has actually had decent uh, ranges, 4.3. Uh, so if you leave a little bit on the table, you're looking at a 30% win. Um, Bitcoin's 
was miserable, like 3% and you're looking at maybe getting 20%, which is what I got this, this week in these swings. But you would have to constantly pay attention. So um, if some weeks are not worth trading. Uh, how will you know? It's just the experience. You'll see, you'll see the experience, uh, you'll have the experience of the pace of the week being set Monday, Tuesday, and then you'll see the pace being kept Wednesday, Thursday, and then you know on those weeks that something is brewing. Friday, Saturday, something is about to happen. Um, they might extend it another week. That can happen as well. I've had uh, cycles, full cycles of sideways for two weeks as well. And they are, um, I call, I, I, we say that they lull the market. And they, I believe, you know, they lull retail traders and they confuse them. And it's, uh, it's, it's again, it's all very psychological. It's meant to um, just to make people miss the big move, I believe. That's, again, my own opinion. I, I, I didn't learn this, but uh, that's what it made me do at times and uh, it taught me it but staying with it taught me resilience as a trader so i found that in these weeks um there is a um there there's a strategy that i use and that strategy is um look at the bigger picture where is this going to go and i look at the four hour and i look at the at the day what's the direction take a position and hold it. So if I take a small position in terms of um, the capital that I put in and I hold that position and I wait to see what that's, what, where that is going. And if it goes my way and it offers me 20, 30% profit, I take that profit off the table as frequently as I can. I was in, in line to get profit from this trade, but it turned around and, um, I lost it. So now I'm in it and I'm, I'm waiting to close the week and close this trade, um, hopefully with a win. It's either with a win or a stop loss. So, because um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to run a, a trade right now without a stop loss um, because it can, it can go the other way very quickly without me, uh, you know, if I'm not watching it every single moment in 15 minutes, it could move uh, the other way. And I not only could I could I be liquidated, but I could also um, uh, miss the move. So what's worse than being liquidated is missing the move, the move that you've TA'd and that you uh, you could have made a lot of money on. So um, my my lesson for this week is. Uh, Take a small position, and that small position allows you to stay in the market and to watch the market, which is, um, again, it's part of the hours spent in the market that will teach you to gauge the pace of uh, some weeks and to anticipate the breakout on those weeks because the pace is small and steady because it's building up, it's collecting orders either way. These weeks are made to look like it's gonna go one way or the other. Take a small position, take profits every time you can. Every time it's worth it. Now, the, the main benefit, um, the main benefit of, um, of a market that is trending sideways is that it will come back to your entry point. So yes, you might be in the red at some point, but it will come back to your entry point. It has a, a decent amount of swings, at least three full swings up and down within that range. So the more, the, if, if the range proves to be profitable enough, so at least 20%, take the profit, wait for the next entry point, get in and get out. Uh, don't, spend, don't spend too much time
don't spend too much time in a trade. Um, so that means too long. Don't spend too long. Too long in a trade. So these swings are one session swings most of the time. So by the end of the session, you will have to... Um, you will have to make a uh, make a call. Do you have would would you like to keep this position open? And if so, you will have to put a stop loss on it. Uh, or do you want to close the position, take the money that's there, or take the small loss and see what's what's being offered to you in the morning? Never trade without a stop loss. Now you can be you can be very generous and put a, I have a 40% stop loss on my bitcoin trade. So the the the, the highest the, today's drop brought me into the red was uh, 30%. So I was 40% I had space for 40%. I wasn't willing to and I'll show you um, practically why I I did it like that. I wasn't willing to let it run more than 40% because that would have meant breaking a huge trend line. And breaking that huge trend line would have meant a huge uh, downwards move, which I would have liked to follow and to have the freedom to follow. So, um, uh, again, I don't trade without a stop loss these sideways because they can pop anytime. Now, some stop losses, uh, some sorry, some sideways have three swings. Uh, other sideways might have six swings up and down. So. It, the, the, their, their length depends on what the market makers are doing in the fundamental context, in the macro context. And I believe this week they're waiting for um, some news tomorrow, some unemployment uh, claims, I think, tomorrow from the States. Uh, there's a fair bit of, of, of news coming tomorrow um, from the States. I remember about three uh, three things were flagged red for tomorrow. So I believe the market is being held for the move tomorrow. Of course, the move tomorrow is going to go in the direction showed by the our, our TA as well, but it's in how it's going to go there. So um, will it go there directly? For instance, I believe we will have, we will have that retrace up to uh, ETH already retraced up to the 20. Um, yeah, so in this case, what would be the next one? The next one would be the 20 on the... No, that, that's way too high. It's 2100, the 20 on the monthly. Um, I think it, it would it would just be this midline here that might be a retrace for for ETH. It's harder to read where ETH might might go to on the up because it's already done the 20 and 55 lift that I anticipated Bitcoin and uh, XRP will do. So uh, I believe ETH will just pump to the previous support and resistance if if the move is up. Um, We'll see when it happens again. That is the huge benefit of hindsight. You know, when it happens, we'll understand why it happened the way it happened. But I believe uh, the next move will, will will be up. However, I am keeping an eye. Like, look at what's happened on on the the fifteen minute arc. Um, it was literally like a running commentary in my head. We're going up, no, we're going down, we're going down, we're going down, we're breaking, we're breaking, we're breaking. No, we're not breaking, we're coming up on, into the space. And here we are back into the space. And it looks like we have great support on, um, we have great support on the one hour again. We're back onto the 50, onto the 20, and the five is coming up with Gusto. So, uh, back to the trades. Um, Long story short, there is n there are not too many trades to be made in sideways week. That's something that we need to accept. Some weeks are more productive than others. 
second second thing is after a side weights week slash weeks because sometimes side weights might take longer we we most certainly will have a breakout and that breakout will be a nice move if i'm gonna take uh, now after all of this consolidation here the more time we spend here i uh, i believe then of course i would still t take my profit here because it would still be a nice chunk of profit from this support and resistance to that it would be 70 percent 79 but let's say you, you want to take it a little bit earlier 70 percent profit thank you very much it is great but then the uh i believe it might actually go to the next one which would be a 15 percent move that's more like it after all of this and then all of this so all of this consolidation here um when i look at it it looks almost like a like a cup and handle like a very wonky distorted cup and handle but anyways take the profits when you're happy with them there's nothing wrong with taking profits too early as long as you're not jumping in the other way <laughs> so if you take your profit when you're happy with it and then you're you sit back calmly and look at what the market is doing and wait for your next signals then you're you're winning all the time um, or most of the time so that's that's the that's the lessons that I wanted to uh, to show you uh, practically in uh, ETH and ETH is uh, ETH was textbook this week ETH was absolutely beautiful uh, it during today's drop ETH was the one that um, helped me get a lot more centered in what price action was doing because ETH was not breaking the level and it gave me a little bit of assurance, no, sorry, a little bit more assurance uh, as to Bitcoin and XRP holding their levels too. Now, let me have a little bit of tea. I did a yoga session before this session to have a little bit of energy. It works, the surprise. Um, now, I will change to Bitcoin. Bitcoin, it has been absolutely miserable to trade. Absolutely miserable. So this was our daily range of 5%. Now, mind you, 5% including all the wicks. If we go into the trades that we've had available, these were the trades. Terrible, terrible range to trade. Nothing to write home about. I think I took profit of about 20 percent here and there this week um i haven't yet counted my trades i'm waiting for friday to do that uh, but it's just bleh, not very exciting um and it's, it wasn't exciting because i had to take profits earlier here at this double top i thought it would come here I posted it would come here, but this double top was just too good to miss out on. Um, and then I think I entered the short here, and then this happened, and then this happened, happy days, and I took profits here. Yes, so these were my two trades this week, one here, one here, and then I entered here. This was in the morning, there we go. This was when I woke up in the morning. Here I entered for this. For this lift because I thought this was gonna be one two three four boom five no boom down so it did a triple top triple bottom formation here as far as I'm concerned nice triple bottom here uh, this is the this is the space that we're we're moving in this is a strong divergence line here the line of the arc and it would breaks up it's gonna go up to 21 2 if it comes down it's gonna come down to 18,000 so somewhere around there where we're we're moving between uh, now coming talking about the trades that um, we had planned this week where were they I changed my charts a little bit a uh, little bit this week and I'm looking at yeah. 
and I don't know where my markings I think this was the this was the chart with the markings but I believe I removed them at some point that was very silly of me ah this was the this was the this was the chart um, let me change to the one hour yeah it was the one hour yeah but I removed the markings thinking those were last week's this is what I'm talking about in terms of brain fog this week it was very strong with me um, I don't have I no longer have the markings but I have the levels so technically uh, we wouldn't we wouldn't have had a single trade a single level trade to make in Bitcoin and the the reason being the reason being the uh, the the next level would have been here and I and I will be very generous let's say you're taking profits here at 21,000 um, there we go 21,900 it is perfect so uh, this would have been it but then all we had this week were were these these two swings which which was the 15 minute arc and yes I believe uh, the 15 minute arc was reasonably easy to read so if we put the if we if we have a look at the 15 minute stochastic uh, and the yes um, so because I remember I remember going in here for mountain peak here and I did take it because the both the RSI's they showed me the entry and they showed me the exit um, and I took the profit and then I uh, I was waiting for this and this showed me the bearish divergence here and it made me not panic about what's gonna come and uh, I took my profit somewhere around here as it hit this uh, I took my profit at 19,700 I had it 19,711 and it came down to 19,713 and then it, it actually met the target of the of, of the line so uh, we wouldn't have had any level trades to, to make this week on Bitcoin Bitcoin was harder to trade uh, than uh, Ethereum in terms of levels it just didn't have the strength to push through small range very very small range um, as much as I was in the red uh, today from here I believe I was 30% there we go yeah I entered there and I entered when it held the one hour nine o'clock in the morning this is it so it was holding the 20 on the one hour and then from here my entry point to where it went today 30% uh, in the red again didn't it's not a, a huge uh, it, it's not a huge uh, red situation but what what I wanted to say was I had a stop loss below this green line here 40% and I wasn't willing to give it more than that why because if we take a moment to look at what this line represents this line represents the structure the base for all of this when Bitcoin breaks this line it's not gonna come down for 200 points it's gonna come down at least to a double bottom at 17700 or 17800 which is it's a 10% drop so yes I would take that 40% uh, loss I would watch the back test of that line jump onto the back test and then head down if there is no back test I might start half of a position where I am which is what I usually do if there is because sometimes I've noticed these days there is no back test um, especially when it, for instance I'll show you and I and I did wanna wanna talk about this to you um, for instance here it broke the line and then there was no back test it just came down to the next level so I would jump in when it breaks the line somewhere around here 
with half of my position and then I wouldn't DCA. I would just take my profit for that half of the position. Uh, but if it does come back and back test the line, I would add the other half of my position and then gain a little bit of mileage in my entry point here. So um, even if I just put half of the position and chase it to, because it is a chase, chase it to the next level, I would still be happy to take a little bit of profit. Uh, but I only start if there is no backtest with half of the position. Um, and we don't know unless, unless you know, somehow it backtested like I thought this had uh, here on, I'll show you on the line that I'm talking to you about. So um, where were we? Um, here. I woke up in the morning and this had happened. I said, oh God, happy days. We're going up for another level. So uh, I thought the back test was done. I hadn't been awake for all of this. Um, I, I took my profit here and then, no, sorry. I, I, I am not correct in this. Let me just, aha, there it is. So I took my profit uh, here for the for the long, then I entered a short and this happened and here we had the bearish divergence. Took my profit here for the short, uh, actually here, 19,700. Uh, then I, I, I did a long here and I took my profit here before I went to bed. But it, this one was only a 15% because I went in only uh, with with a sh uh, uh, half of my position because I didn't trust this uh, this move. It was very fast and I didn't trust it. So I went in uh, with only half of my position. That's why I'm not even thinking of it as a super trade this week. It, it was just an extra. It was a bonus. And then when I woke up, I saw that it had done all of this and then it did this, this back test without breaking the previous top here. And I thought, oh, happy days, we're going in for another lift. So that's where I entered um, my long on this back test. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't do it. Let me change a little bit this line there. It didn't do it and um, and it started coming down, and by it coming down, um, 23, okay. By it's coming down, put me in the red. Now I'm only in the red for 9%, so it looks like it's gonna head up and um, and at least, at least take me back into the green. Um, I would really like to close this position, these positions uh, tonight, um, and then wait to see what tomorrow brings, uh, unless, I have some really, you know, how can I say, a great, great move, uh, moves happening or great support ha happening on the on the one hour. I wouldn't let these trades run uh, tonight without a stop loss to protect my my profits or to protect my entry points. They can go back to my entry points, because if they do go back to my entry points, that means more sideways, more, more, more gains. Um, so that's, that's where, that's where, um, that's where I am with, with the, the, the trade analysis. To mm -hmm.